Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lee and this is my library. So grab a mug of something yummy and settle in for a whopping big announcement <laughs> and a little taco books. It is the perfect gloomy fall day outside. The best atmosphere I could ask for uh, when making this announcement. And that announcement is that I am now a published author. I mean, even just saying it out loud is surreal. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited uh, to, to be able to make these announcements, finally. Um, mostly I'm just exhausted and relieved. <laughs> it has been such a long process to get to this point, um, and I'm, I am very excited to share it with you all, but oh man, when I was told that it was being sent to the printer last Wednesday, I fully was like, and that's it. <laughs> I don't have to do anything else. I have to do a lot more. <laughs> but I was like, that, that was the final hurdle. And it was the confirmation that this thing that I've been working on for years um, is finally ready to go. And so without further ado, this video uh, is going to be about the story behind the story. I'm sure it probably will come as a surprise to some of you that this is happening. And until a few days ago, I had kept it pretty close to pocket um, um, about the fact that I was publishing something outside of family and close friends. Um, and that was mostly due to some personal reasons. Um, 2022 has been a particularly difficult year for me. Um, and so I will talk about the publishing process in a different video because that's its own <laughs> separate story, um, and as well as a few other videos about um, being a newbie author a little further on down the line. I will still be doing bookish content, don't worry, um, but this is a huge thing that also deals with books, so I felt like I needed to include some of it uh, on this particular channel. Let's talk about the story. So my book's title is The Star Radio Show, and it is a children's Christmas uh, theater production, and it is set in a 1940s vintage radio theater uh, company or <laughs> production. <laughs> Um, very vintage, lots of cool old radio jingles uh, and Christmas Kroner classics. It is a hybrid story of the Nativity Story and A Christmas Carol, and it follows the story of a man named Happy Highmore, who is our Ebenezer Scrooge character, and he is all alone in his radio station on Christmas Eve to put on the Christmas special by himself. And he is very lonely and bitter about the festiveness. He doesn't really feel the need to do that. And so he's complaining a lot while he's doing his job. <laughs> and he falls asleep listening to the music he's playing. And he is visited by his co-host, Jack Alonzo, and three musical guests um, that sort of uh, do their best to try and teach Happy the true meaning of Christmas and how we are never really alone uh, if we have faith. Um, it's a really funny, poignant story. Um, and so I'm going to flashback to when this story was first created and how it got to this particular point. So growing up, uh, the Advent season was always my favorite thing. Um, and one of my favorite parts about the Advent season or the Christmas season is, um, or was, um, participating in children's Christmas programs. Um, it was so much fun to be able to, to tell the Christmas story. Um, it was fun to work with other kids, but it was mostly fun because my mom, the ingenious woman that she is, uh, for many years uh, created, wrote, and directed all of our Christmas productions. And she came up with countless ways to retell the nativity story that were fun, um, from full-scale sanctuary renovations to uh, just to simple lessons and carols. Um, it, it, it didn't really matter what she did, it was always solid, and it was always so much fun to watch her create these things. And so I would always ask to help. <laughs> Um, because even from a young age, I was really in love with storytelling. And eventually, when I got old enough, uh, she allowed me to help her. And the first show we ever co-wrote together was an absolute blast. And then I went to college. And um, I was separate enough from uh, my family and my hometown that uh, I didn't really help participate or create any of those shows anymore. And um, when I was a newly minted college grad um, in 2017, um, my mom announced that she was gonna take a step back from doing that. And I was a little heartbroken because she was such a, a tour de force with these things that she did. Um, and she's like, well, if you love it so much and you don't like that I'm quitting so much, you just do it. And f <laughs> for whatever reason, I said yes. Um, looking back, 2017 was also a pretty hard year for me. Um, newly graduated, didn't really have any clue as to what I was gonna do. Um, pretty lost both 
um, employment wise, but also personal spiritual wise. I didn't really know who I was or what I was supposed to do. Um, love that quarter life crisis. It's a really fun thing. Um, <laughs> and so I said yes. Um, and I, I sat down to begin writing and I was stuck. Um, I tried a lot of stuff. It didn't work. Some of it was okay. Some of it was most, most of it was pretty bad. Um, and I was really stuck um, for subject matter because I wanted this to be good. Um, my mom left big shoes to fill. She would never say that, <laughs> but she did. Um, this legacy that she left, it, it was hard to fill and hard to live up to. Um, and so I was really struggling for content. I didn't know what I wanted to write about. And then I remembered uh, one Christmas, um, we, my grandpa, one of my grandpa's favorite radio jingles growing up was the Chiquita Banana Song. Um, and <laughs> um, that reminded me of a time when, um, for fun, I looked up see if, to see if I could find any more old radio jingles uh, on my phone um, via Spotify. And lo and behold, I found a huge playlist, multiple playlists of old radio jingles or TV jingles. Um, and I played them for him and it was such a, a pure memory of him being able to listen to those things and a blast for the past, blast for the past for a lot of my family members. It was a good Christmas. Um, and I was like, that would be kind of fun to do something sort of vintage uh, with, with what I wrote. And then I remembered uh, a scene from the 1982 film, Annie. Um, <laughs> and it's the scene where she travels with Daddy Warbucks to, um, a radio station to make the announcement that she's looking for her parents in there as a uh, money um, available for those who can prove that uh, they are Annie's parents and that radio station um, you got a glimpse into the full-scale production that w was radio shows back then um, you had live musicians singing these radio jingles you had musical guests you had a very charismatic host my favorite part was uh, the sound effects table someone would create all of the sound effects to highlight um, these commercials or whatever was um, being broadcast uh, on these shows and both in the stage production and in that movie of Annie it was so much fun um, to be able to to do that um, and or to be able to watch that and so I was like yeah that I want to incorporate that let's make it a late 1940s radio show and let's use sound effects let's use old radio jingles um let's have some you know background music of the christmas crooner classics let's do it that would be so much fun have some kids in some period costumes um it would just be it would be so much fun and so i set out to do that and then mid-november <laughs> i stalled again um because i i could not find the touchstone of this show um, the Christmas story has so much meaning, but my character at that point, I did have a character who happy, um, I, but I, he was very dull and I couldn't bring him to life with anything. Um, and I was so f frustrated because this really was the summary of my whole year. I work so hard and I get to that final hurdle and I falter because I can't really find meaning to it. And it was very personal to me. Um, it felt very much like a moment of catharsis. <laughs> Who knew that a 20 minute Christmas show <laughs> would be a, a moment of self therapy. Um, and so I was sitting with uh, my notebook trying to figure out what I was gonna do and I was getting so angry and I was feeling very lonely um, and um, isolated and grouchy. And as soon as I was able to pick apart those feelings I was like, I am really having a bah humbug moment. And it clicked. I said, yes, that is the thing that needs to hold this show together from the beautiful story that is the nativity story. And these characters and setting that I'm trying to bring to life, this is the thing that makes them meet in the middle. And that was a retelling of A Christmas Carol. Charles Dickens is one of my favorite classics authors. Tale of Two Cities is my favorite, but A Christmas Carol is um, one of my faves. Um, and, uh, Coincidentally, um, a Christmas Carol came up in my TBR this year, and so I got a little emotional listening to that, knowing that this was coming. Um, anyway, um, I remember the day I finished this show. Uh, it was Sunday in 2017, um, and I was frantically typing uh, during worship, <laughs> trying to get it finished. Um, there's Christmas Carols coming from the sanctuary, church is about over, I'm sprinting to the office to make copies. 
volunteers are asking me questions <laughs> while I'm highlighting <laughs> furiously. Um, and it all worked out. Um, anyone who has participated in any sort of children or youth ministry, really any ministry, knows that nothing really ever goes according to plan. You sort of put things into place, throw it all up in the air, and hope that some of it lands where you put it originally. Um, and so it was stressful, but it was so much fun. And the minute uh, that the show started, um, it was sort of this full circle moment of, I didn't write this just for me. This was not just a, a uh, a moment of catharsis for me in putting the show together, but it was also an opportunity for kids to be empowered to tell good stories and to be confident in themselves and to share their faith with other people. And again, those moments, if anyone has worked in ministry, those moments that make everything worth it. It doesn't matter the journey that you took to get there. It's those moments of pure uh, joy where God is very present in, in, in that moment that make everything worthwhile. And so that was how the story originally came to be. The The production was a hit. The kids did a great job. My volunteers were godsend. <laughs> um, and a couple of their suggestions actually made it into um, uh, the production notes of the show. So thank you very much for that. Um, fast forward a, a couple years. Um, I did get my job in ministry, um, which was, uh, again, a godsend in its own way. Um, I did actually one of my mom's Christmas programs the first year or the first Christmas I was there. The second year I was like, you know what? I loved this show so much the first time. Let's do it again. And so I pulled out the star radio show again. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking this would be really fun to sell. The show would be fun to sell to someone who would want to publish it as part of their curriculum. And so I went into the show one, uh, directing it again and wanting my kids to have a good time um, and to, to be able to experience the, the the joy of telling the Christmas story. But I also wanted to hone it. I was like, let's let's go through it a little bit and let's make some changes and let's perfect the thing. Kids are the best editors, I tell you what. <laughs> um, I was pulling kindergarten one-liners and middle schooler attempts at sarcasm from, you know, <laughs> and shoehorning it in and, and perfecting it and I did it the first time too but um kids are funny they are the best judges of what's funny and what works and what doesn't work um and so I really used them as my editing tool <laughs> uh the second go around and they did a great job and it was so much fun and then I sat on it uh, I didn't really do anything with it um until this year and uh through a series of events um ended up publishing it um but this story really is just a culmination of many things that I love. And I'm so, I gotta get a little emotional. <laughs> so uh, thankful for the examples given to me by my mom um, when I was younger and when she would be writing these Christmas programs. And that homemade is always best. There's something so genuine about knowing the people that you are writing this for. Um, and creating a show that is uniquely personal to, to them, but also one that can be applicable to, to anyone who wants to use it. One of the main things that motivated me a lot when I was working my ministry job was that I wish there were more resources of quality for churches of small quantity. Um, and that was really a main thing when I was publishing this this book is that I want that to be the, the, the message behind, one of the messages behind the story is, it doesn't matter the size of your congregation. It doesn't matter the size of the, the group putting this on. I want this to be accessible and I want it to be affordable for small churches to have something of quality um, in, in what they do. Um, and my mom's wonderful example of creating homemade stuff for our small church really um, is a huge inspiration to me. And so I am very honored for this to be my first book and why uh, I also am very honored to be able to dedicate this uh, first book to her. Emotions! <clears throat> um, I haven't told her that part yet. Uh, I will maybe film her reaction and include it in here. <laughs> okay. This is the whole thing. The way it looks. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> That's what I wanted to show you. <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna make me feel <laughs> all warm and fuzzy everywhere. <laughs> I like your brother's name in there too. That's great. What? Hmm? You're famous. It's for you. Famous. You're welcome. I'm so excited to see this one. So. <laughs> in print, on, in hand, mm -hmm. you can hold it up and. Love you. <laughs> like I said, the, it, it's just such a culmination of things that I love and things that made me me. And um, I didn't think that my first foray into being published would look like this. Um, I was in it for a much longer haul with a much bigger book. When I got the notification that my book had been sent to the printer, it was really a moment of, along with exhaustion and relief, uh, a moment of, of clarity and satisfaction of, I wouldn't have this any other way. It, it, this story it really is a culmination of so much of what i love and moments of my life that are, were important to me and highlights a, a part of faith that i really think is important about fostering the future of um, the church and um i wouldn't have it any other way i have a contract i have an isbn number <sighs> i have a potential release date uh that hasn't been nailed down yet but <laughs> it is coming um and i will uh let you guys know when uh the play is uh, available for purchase it will be very soon in time for the christmas season <sighs> this is a massive weight off my chest being able to finally tell people that <laughs> this is happening uh like i said um i will get into more parts of the story of how this book came to be uh later on down the road as well as maybe an author tube newbie tag we'll see um but for now um i'm gonna take a long nap <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, <laughs> if you like this video, if you want to know more about me and uh, the books that I read and the things that I write, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out and let me know what you guys want to see. As always, a huge thank you, especially today, for uh, the friends and family who have readily supported me in this journey, my book journey, and now this author journey. It truly means the world to me, and I can't wait to see what's on the next page. Cheers. <laughs>